I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors Updates, and welcome to today's program. Today is Wednesday. It's June the 10th, and uh, here we are. We're already in June in 2020. It's amazing. We're in phase two reopening, uh, which means we're slowly starting to get things back into normal. In fact, uh, earlier today, Joe and myself were on the radio with Dr. Lee Sheldon, who's been a a friend of helping seniors for years and years and years. And uh, we had a good radio show talking about that things are starting to really uh, move forward. People are uh, able to get back out and start living again. And so I'm really delighted today on behalf of Joe Steckler, Kim Bernard, and our entire Helping Seniors team to welcome a, another longtime excellent friend of Helping Seniors, Amy Van Fossen, with the law office of Amy Van Fossen. Hey, how are you today? Hi, how are you today? Thanks for having me. So such a, such a privilege always to have you on the show. I know we've had the privilege of doing a number of good Helping Seniors television shows. And by the way, viewer, uh, I want you to have an opportunity to, to find those. You can just Google Amy Van Fossen on either the Helping Seniors website page, our YouTube channel, or even our Facebook page, and you will see some of the excellent, excellent information uh, that uh, comes in those TV shows that Amy has, uh, has kindly guested on. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the business and what's going on. Now, you guys went through all the same precautions and everything we did. Tell right. us a little bit about what that's been like. Well, we're an essential business. So we have been opened from the beginning. Um, we made it a corporate um, policy that if you had children under the age of five, you were able to work from home. So that included my daughter who had at the time six month old baby and a couple other folks had some younger children as well. So a handful of us stayed back. The rest of them worked from home. We spent a ton of money on computers and printers and the internet was jamming quite a bit, but that's how we started. We, like most people, we had no idea where this was going, right? We, we had gloom and doom. And I'm like, we bought like the last three laptops at Best Buy. We were just scrambling because we are an essential business. We work with elderly people and, and their medical needs are not going to revolve around the coronavirus, right? I mean, they're, they're naturally having, unfortunately, heart attacks and strokes and, and major medical things, despite what the rest of the world is doing. So we knew that we had to keep open. Um, our doors were locked for a long time. Um, just recently, we started to unlock them on a regular basis. We had a drop box in the front of the office where people could drop, drop documents off. And um, we've had to embrace technology. So, I mean, beyond the basic Lysol, cleaning everything, those kinds of things, you know, masks and gloves, we tried to put other procedures in place as well. And so half of the staff probably stayed home for about a month. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got to the point where we were just so busy, we, we very carefully allowed some people back um, in the office and, and we were all very cautious. We all worked and we all went home. That was it. So we kind of controlled where we were all going. Um, but even today, we have folks that still come in with face masks. If they're more comfortable, we certainly have that as well. Um, everybody gets whatever pen you touch, you take it home, you know, we're not cleaning the pens, unlike apparently the city of Melbourne um, building department, you, they will, they'll wash your pens and put them back in a different box. We're not doing that. We're giving right. pens away. But it's been, it's been really, um, it's been really scary and stressful. And, and we've done a lot of estate plans because people mm -hmm. have been so worried about passing away because of the virus. Sure. We have had a few clients pop in or their families come in because people have passed because of the virus, oh. um, but not an overwhelming number. Brevard County, we're super lucky. You know, we're not New York City. Yes, we're not yes, Chicago, sir. Boston, D.C. And so we've been um, so incredibly lucky in Brevard County. So, you know, we're opening back up. I know the restaurants are opening back up and people are moving around. Um, we've done a ton of um, Zoom mm -hmm. um, seminars. Um, yesterday was the first day where we had people in the office. I was so excited because <laughs> I like people. I'm the people person. I like to see people. So we had a handful of people in the office and a hand people on Zoom. Um, handful of people, sorry, on Zoom. And I think that that will continue. So there will be some things that we will continue, open ourselves up more into the internet, um, talking with clients and seminars. We were doing one or two seminars every week somewhere. Right. And so we've had to completely change that practice. And we, we did our best on the Zoom. We had some funny things happen during those meetings, but I won't talk about today. Um, but, you know, we're going to embrace that, especially if you've got like mom and dad live in Brevard County, very common. And, mm -hmm. and the kids are back north to wherever your hometown is. Right. And the kids can zoom into a seminar. So mom and dad can be in my office. Mm -hmm. The kids can zoom in. Um, we're, we're trying to work that out. Um, in our new office that uh, we're going to move hopefully by October, November, we're going to have like a media room. 
Mm -hmm. So we'll have it set up to do a lot more of that stuff. And Carrie, wait, I might need your um, advice on how to set some of that technology stuff up because you're so good. So we're just doing whatever makes people comfortable. I've, I've been, uh, we have, uh, I've just worked my tail off and I'm at the exhausted stage about, about two or three weeks ago. I'm like, I just got to take some time off for this, but you know, whatever the, com the, the clients are comfortable with. I mean, everything, again, we're back to the same thing everybody's doing. Mm -hmm. We've got so much Lysol. We've got, I mean, our skin is falling off our hands because we're Lysoling <laughs> everything, you know? Um, the doors are Lysol. We've got Purell everywhere. So those are the, the basic things that we're doing, you know? It's good. And embracing the internet, I think, is the other thing. We're doing, it's, it's really unfortunate, I think, the thing we need to talk about are, are folks in assisted living or skilled nursing. Yes. Because we're not allowed to visit. And I take no. care of about 13 lovely souls. And I can't see them other than on FaceTime on a lovely nurse will, you know, bring their cell phone into a room and we actually get to FaceTime our clients, but to get documents signed, it's just daunting. Like we're standing on the outside of glass and the documents are inside and the clients are, are you know, signing their stuff inside the building. And then the, we get the documents back and we witness and notarize and whatever the Florida bar requires. So those are the kinds of precautions and it's just an added layer of, of stress, I think. But we're still able to do it and we're all just making it up. I mean, we've had little direction from, you know, our government entities of how to do these things. So we're making it up as we go along and doing the best we can. You know? Yeah, it's a little bit of uncharted territory. I was thinking, you know, yeah. uh, we have the privilege of sharing uh, an office for, for you guys. It's the satellite office. For us, it's the main right. office for helping right. seniors over at the Senior Resource Center of Brevard. And I was really excited to see that we're going to be able to sit back down on, I think it's July 10th, and we're starting to look forward to the things that we're going to accomplish back at the center because same as you guys, we, uh, out of an abundance of caution and we really want to protect everybody that's, uh, over there. And I really think that's a credit, by the way, if you think about it, they shut down that place and said, we're not going to have people coming in and out. And they did that way, way early. And I remember thinking to myself, Oh my goodness, is this, this is so unheard of, but now looking back, I sure am glad that they took those extra steps. Well, and some of the assisted livings have been very more, very much more proactive than the others. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at, I mean, I think that one of the things that um, someone mentioned to me, I might want to mention on this um, mm -hmm. program, is that not all testing is the same. I mean, some oh. coronavirus testing is is not as efficient or effective. You know, they're not as the efficacy isn't as high on some others and some of the better facilities are using the Cadillac version of the testing mm -hmm. and they are testing more positive because they have a higher, you know, efficacy. Right. And then some of the other ones are just using, Oh, let's just kind of test and maybe they don't have the numbers. And so I think that if we were to advise family members, you know, it's time for mom to go to assisted living or skilled nursing. I, I would advise them to really ask about the testing and have they tested and, and all of those things, because as an yeah. elder law attorney, we do get involved in the medical side and, sure. and we're advising clients, you know, which facility should we go into? And I'm like, okay, you know, when, when you have a, you know, trauma like this, how are these people stepping up to the mm -hmm. plate? And the ones that are saying, no, we're going to do the Cadillac testing. We're going to pay mm -hmm. the big money for the best tests. That would be where I would want my parent to go. Right. Oh, and, so, and I think it's just a good question, you know, and yeah. it's, it's, you know, beyond the, hey, it's Lysol and stuff, but are all the staff members tested? And I have a feeling Zahn is up there with the top, you know, they've, they've got a pretty good reputation. Yeah. So. And like I said, I mean, when they first said, hey, guys, we need to take these steps, you know, we hadn't even yeah. barely heard of what this disease right. was. And then we're like, right. wow. So so I really have to say I, I admire that. And, and yeah. just like you guys, we made those adjustments, too. But it's really good to see that you guys are moving forward and getting information out. And I was we were talking before we uh, started recording that uh, if you go to the Amy B. Van Fossen uh uh, Facebook page, and, and we'll make sure that we link to this. We put everything that we do under a section of the Helping Seniors website. You can get to it by going to helpingseniorsupdates.com, helpingseniorsupdates.com, and I'll make sure that we get a link in there that talks about this, but you have just a plethora of yeah. different informational seminars coming up. I'm just, I'm just scrolling through these. You have a guardianship seminar, estate planning workshops coming up, Ask okay. the Attorney, Medicaid planning, VA benefits, key life decisions. Are you prepared? I mean, it's it's amazing what resources that you guys are going uh, and making available to 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 folks. 
Well, we also did some Facebook um, tidbits as well. So every department head did like a like every day, Monday through Friday, a mm -hmm. different, hey, think about these things. So our VA guy did a few, mm -hmm. our case manager did a few, our guardianship mm -hmm. attorney did a few. And just trying to pump some little bits of information out there. I think elder law, no, it's just not a well-known area of law. Mm -hmm. And you never know about it until a parent or somebody close to you has some, some elderly issues. You know, they fall and bop their head and they're in skilled nursing. And, you know, we just thought we would take mom home and everything would be fine like it was back in the 50s and 60s. Well, things have changed considerably. Yeah. Plus, families don't always live here. So mm -hmm. we're trying to just do a lot more education. I mean, you know, frankly, we're, we're, we're trapped, at, you know, in the office like everybody else. So we were coming up with some different marketing ideas. I also, we came up with an idea to just a, a weekend of positivity. And so we have people, all kinds, just a wide range. I actually had a friend from Switzerland do a, you know, a 30 second, hey, we got this, let's all stick together. And it was funny because other folks wanted to sort of us to hand a torch off and they would take over as well. But, you know, it just, it got so depressing for a while, you know, so I'm like, let's do some positive stuff. That's but yeah, our, our website and our Facebook page is full of great stuff. We're very active on the internet, but we also have seminars and, um, the ask the attorney is wide open. I mean, you know, we charge quite a bit of money by the hour. You get to ask me anything for free. And, um, and so it's, it's just fun, but I like being out there. I can't wait for, to do more seminars in person. And, and, you know, it, it's, it's a good time. I miss the people. I can never work from home, you know, being trapped. I'm a very social person being trapped in this office, being trapped in my house has been crazy. So I'm looking forward to getting out there. And if you guys have any ideas for something else to talk about, we'll, you know, we'll come up with something. A absolutely. I'm looking forward to getting back to doing some more episodes of Helping Seniors TV. And like I said, today was actually a big milestone for us because this was the first day that we actually got back and we did radio social distancing. You'll see the pictures on Facebook later. Joe had his mask on, yeah. Gary had his mask <laughs> on, and we're making sure we're six feet apart and all that. But it, but we both agreed it was like really nice to kind of be back to uh, yeah. back back to being able to do it like that. So and uh, I appreciate you taking time out of your well, schedule you. to kind of update us on this today. Just before we close out, I want to remind everybody the Helping Seniors Car Raffle is still moving full speed ahead. We were talking just before uh, rolling for this that uh, Joe is working with Mark Pylock, the owner of the American Muscle Car Museum. The governor is now allowing groups of 10, but if you were there last year, there was considerably more than 10 people. In fact, it was like a record crowd of, of over 2,000 people. So wow. we're hoping to get that scheduled uh, even in this next week. So we'll, we promise to keep you updated on that, but you can get your tickets, helpingseniorscarraffle.com. Uh, there are four amazing cars that the winner gets to choose from, from AJ Hires of Boniface Hires. Uh, there's that really cool Camaro. There's a really cool Dodge Challenger. There is a, uh, uh, the amazing Mazda Miata. And if you're a little bit more practical, you can even have a, a Kia Sportage. So that's a great crossover vehicle. And the winner is going to pick and the fun is going to be out there at the American Muscle Car Museum. So helping seniors car raffle.com for that. And uh, Amy, thanks again for taking time out of your full schedule uh, to not only help us today, as you always do, and being uh, sharing good information on the TV shows and things like that, and just really appreciate all your support for all that we're trying to accomplish together in helping seniors. Well, thank you for having me. Call me anytime. All right. Thanks, Amy. And thank you, viewer, for tuning in. We will see you on Friday. I'm Carrie Fink on behalf of Joe Steckler and Kim Bernard and the whole Helping Seniors crew. Hope you have a great rest of the week.